Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. One game from the Gashim of 2019 that I had not considered to be of interest is the game of round six between Ding Liren and Magnus Carlsen. Ding Liren is China's best and he's an extremely strong chess player. But what are his chances against the reigning world champ? If anyone can do it, it is Ding Liren himself. Why? Well, looking at historical data, these two have 39 games on record and the score is tied 50-50. Carlsen knows Ding Liren is a formidable player and Carlsen knows if anyone can challenge him, it will be Ding Liren himself. Ding Liren White got started with a default opening and through this, It is another King's Indian. G3, going for the Fianchetto or Fianghetto variation. Let's do this. There are plenty of games with this format. Takes, takes. And after the knight was developed, Bishop G7, and now Knight E5. Something that aims to throw black off guard. Magnus was not bothered and castled. Knight c3 and bishop f5. Also let white to castle. And with the knight penetrating into e4, the whole idea is to exchange. But rather than this, Ding Liren attempts to complicate matters. This is what he did. And Carlsen here is in a type of a pickle. He can easily attack the knight. But when the knight moves out, this bishop on g7 gets to become quite inactive. So Carlsen did this differently. He traded the knights and developed the other knights, or shall I say, his only knight, to add the pressure on the center. Liren accepted the exchange. And look at how sharp Ding Liren is. Queen a4, going for black's weakest spot. Carlsen was thinking very deep whether it was appropriate to let c6 fall and took nearly 80 minutes of his time before making his next move. And what do you think he does? e6, deciding to drop the pawn. If Ding Liren wants him, he can have him. Liren took him all right and worried afterwards. He knew the rook was going to chase after the queen. And this is what happened. Queen back to a4. Got in turn, this guy to come off. And when the rook was challenged, both rooks came off. And here, it was Carlsen's turn to turn on the heat. Queen b6 led to this. And when this quite aggressive queen move followed, queen d1. And now as a result of this line of play, a2 is hanging. But we know if Carlsen goes for him, a7 is also going to fall. So for this reason, Magnus went for an entirely different response. A4. And when the queen was attacked, the queen jumped into the next square. And here Carlson came up with a type of response that seems to make little sense. This is what he did. But what is the aim of this bishop move? I'm not able to figure it out, guys, sorry. Bishop back got both the bishops to come off. But rather than capture the bishop with a queen, Ding Liren took him with a king. Given this position, diagrammatically, white looks better because of the relatively bad bishop on g7. There are ways to get him into the game and become active, but it costs moves. Bishop f6, bishop e7, and he's right into the game. Carlsen went for this rook response. And when Liren challenged the queen on b2, Carlsen accepted. And from what we can see, white looks far better off because of the bad looking bishop. But Carlsen is not the world champ for nothing. This rook move to e8 was to allow this bishop to get active. But Carlsen is looking at this variation using a slightly different angle to it. He went for this move, trying to break white's strong pawn formation. There is not much you can do here. 
takes, takes, and not takes, but this immediate move. Got the bishops to come off. And even with the double pawn, white looks far stronger. But as it transpires, taking the bishop with this pawn would make all the difference. But let's see what happened there because the game is by no means determined. Rook d8, saving his isolated central pawn. And I think in order to make any progress, those kings are needed and are needed to make their presence felt. And I'm surprised as to why Ding Liren did not go for a king move here. And why doesn't he get this king to move up the board? He came up with this answer. And what do you think Carlsen does? He did go for a king move. King e2, king e7, and rook e3 led to the king to take an extremely active role. And when Ding Liren went for a king move too, I think it was a bit too late. And you simply can't allow Carlsen any chances. Rook d7, protecting a7, got this guy to come up the board. Rook c7, rook b8, and rook c5, attacking a5, got the rook on b7. And when the pawns began to disappear, a check, king up the board, another check, king back. And when these moves were repeated, another draw between Carlsen and Liren was recorded. If anyone in this game had better chances of winning, it was Ding Liren himself, but it didn't do enough to derail Carlsen despite his excellent attacking opportunities. But with Carlsen holding the lead with the smallest possible margin, is he safe? It all depends on the other games and how Vichy and Sergei do in their own game. And of course, I can't wait to see that round seven game between Carlsen and Geary. A Geary who's hungry to inflict maximum damage. And by the way, the two followers, Sergei and Vichy, are up against each other. And we do have a development there, but I shall leave it there. But the Shamkir continues, and it shall continue to the very end. And when in the Vichy, Sergei game is going to get the winner to meet Carlsen at the very top. But who said this tournament was by any means easy? I shall be back with more. So until next time, this was your chess puzzler.